Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to today's video. I'm gonna be giving you five tips to improve at Yu-Gi-Oh. These are, feel like, I feel like these are the things that I did to, um, to get, you know, better at the game. Uh, the first thing is I never really stuck to one deck. I played a whole different bunch of decks and if you watch my channel since the inception, I've always been, you know, trying to see what are the decks are in the format and, you know, just trying them out. I think understanding the card pool in the game gives you a huge advantage at, you know, understanding interaction points and winning, like, you know, determining when to, like, hand trap correctly. And, of course, at the same time, right, like, unless you're, like, Seto Kaiba, it's, like, literally impossible to get all these cards in person. Um, so I would say that, like, try these decks out in, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Simulators, like, Dueling Book um, or anything along those lines. And, you know, just understand how they function, like, understand how they work. Um, just so that you can have a better understanding of like what's in the metagame, uh, what they do, what their goal is, and so that you have a better understanding at the end of the day to stop them um, and make sure that, you know, like they don't proceed um, with their game plan. Uh, two, watch back your games. I think um, a lot of people like you, you, I bet you're guilty of this too if you're watching this. Um, at regionals or like events after a round would end, you guys would all huddle back to your friends and you'd be like, yo, man. Dude, this guy is open insane, bro. Or like, ah, or like they go with like, man, I bricked or all this stuff, right? And then at the end of the day, like you got to find out the real reason. Was it actually because you bricked? Was it actually because they opened insane? Could you have actually done anything differently or did you actually misplay? And I think being honest with yourself is like the best way to understand like the better plays going forward and like, um, you know, how to like, you know, uh, like how to navigate your worst hands. Um, you know, playing the best you can so that variance isn't an issue. I think, like, that is honestly kind of the biggest mis misconception about, like, a lot of, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Where a lot of people just says, oh, like, you do this, you do this, you lose. Oh, my God, like, your opponent opened insane, which is compared hands. But there are ways where, like, I still won with, like, bad hands. There are games in which, like, I've gotten rebooted, Twin Twistered, Pankratops, and I still won playing a trap deck. Um, and, you know, so I think it is possible to still win those games that seem unwinnable. Um, you just have to, like, look back and see, like, you know, what you could have done differently or what you could have done better. Um, next, finding a testing group. So this is the third one. I think, like, becoming friends with people and not to, like, be weird about it. Right? I'm not saying, like, go stalk people, go slide people in DM and be super annoying. Kind of, like, just naturally, um, organically become friends with people and ask them to, like, play. Um, and also at the same time, making sure that in these testing groups, you're not really playing to win, but playing to learn like all the interaction points, like what the deck does and all that good stuff. Because I see too many times people are tryharding against their friends and testing. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Susu, what's up? Like, so what I'm trying to get at ultimately is, you know, finding a testing group, find friends to play with. It, it makes the enjoyment so much, or like the, the Yu-Gi-Oh aspect, the social component so much more enjoyable. I think Yu-Gi-Oh at the end of the day is a very social game. Um, and having friends um, it, along the way will make it the experience so much better for you. And also help you improve at the game because they might see things that you don't or you might see plays that they don't. And so like interacting with each other and trying to like help come up with each other like decks and ideas and theories will, you know, like really, really advance. Um, and you'll definitely be able to like figure out more than um, than you can by yourself. A uh, fourth, enter locals and then slowly transition to like higher tier events. Um, I feel like the best practice are against like you know the best players, and sometimes you don't always get the you know opportunities. You're not always friends with the best players. You're not always friends with like you know all the pro players or the well-known players. So the best way to get access to that is you know playing higher tiered events. Um, because you will be as long as you keep doing well, even like if you start off early enough. You might get paired up against some of these people and like you might get paired up against some like the best of the best and putting yourself in that position to play against those type of people will only help you grow um and of course like going back to like the the um the second point i made is you know look back at your replays when you play against really good players i remember i once played gabriel susi in a ppg tournament in top four i looked over my replay and he played perfectly through around nibru played perfectly around like my hand traps and i, I look at it and i'm like wow like this is how Salomon Grace should be played, right? And then I gain a deeper appreciation for the deck because I looked at it as, oh, this is actually just gets nibs and it dies. But the way he maneuvered, navigated his hand, played around certain cards, you know, was just like amazing. Like I was like, wow, like this is like you could tell like immediately like someone is a good player just by from the way they play, how they play, and looking through the replays only solidifies that understanding. Um and the other thing about going to higher tier events is that I think even playing more tournaments in general. 
um, gives you a hands-on experience that like, you know, that just theorying, like theorying like an ivory tower cannot give you. Like, you know, sitting around trying to figure out like X, Y, and Z decks, trying to play this card or that card doesn't really help. At the end of the day, you need to go to a tournament. You need to put that to the test. Um, and so, you know, going to as many turns as possible and getting more experience will also help with non-Yu-Gi-Oh factors that contribute to your gameplay, such as fatigue and nerves, right? I see so many people misplay on live stream um, just because, like, you know, they're nervous and they're, they're tired. It's it's top four right now. And, like, you know, it's been, like, literally 10 hours of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? But putting yourself in positions um, where you're tired, where you're fatigued and all that good stuff can help you, like, adapt and overcome that. Like, I mean... I remember my first YCS ever at YCS Vegas, I was, you know, so hungry. I didn't eat for like eight, nine rounds. Like I couldn't, you know, like I was just there like playing the game, but I was so focused, um, you know, that it didn't matter that I was like hungry. I just kept playing. I had like a little snack bar, granola bar, just keep me, um, you know, sane. But now going forward, if I go to a Yugo event, I'm going to bring like snacks with me to make sure that, you know, I stay like hydrated. I stay like, uh, like fed just so that I don't let non Yugo factors apply to me. Um, such as nerf, nerves and fatigues. And lastly, at the end of the day, guys, have fun. And what I mean is I see too many people getting tilted playing this game, man. It's like, you know, they complain about getting sacked. They're throwing, like, rage fits. Like, you know, at the end of the day, guys, like, you know, have fun, right? Like, understand that variance will always be a part of Yu-Gi-Oh! And coming to terms with that will help you become a better player because you will always, always make sure to play your best and play as optimal as possible because... If you were to misplay and give your opponent an extra draw, that extra draw could like be a turn in variance that could let you lose the game. You like this, bro? The magical hats. <laughs> Alright, I'll pass. Magical... Alright, before end phase, I'm gonna activate Royal Decree. Well, you got it. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, that component of just having fun, playing the best you can. And, all, and understand that variance is still a part of Yu-Gi-Oh! And not to get tilted. Maintaining your sanity. Maintaining your nerves. Um, and your, like, mental. Um, is very, very important. Because, you know, if you, like, let's say get sacked in round 3. Are you going to let that you basically hold you down until, like, rounds 4, 5, 6, and 8? I remember even in the Romo to YCS, I lost round 3. Because I didn't open a single prank kit. But did I, like, get upset? And, like, basically started playing worse because of that? Because when you, do, when you are upset... I've seen, like, you know, like, that emotion, like, makes you play a lot worse. But it's for me, instead of getting that, I'm just like, I mean, I knew I was going to break at least once. At least it happened round three, right? And that's the mindset I had, and I just kept playing my best round after round. And But a lot of people would get so frustrated or fixated over things they can't control, right? And so the, the, the biggest takeaway from this is to understand what is controllable and what is not controllable. Um, you know, how your opponent opens and how you open is all variance, right? Um, unless your opponent like stacks, <laughs> but like then the day it's all variants, right? So it's just making sure you play the best you can using the hand you draw on and instead of relying to some cookie cutter combo, like, you know, make do of your hand, see it correctly and then sequence it the best way you can. Right. And so, you know, I hope that guys, I hope that helps you. And these are like the tips I have. Um, if you guys want to see more in-depth videos describing each of these different tips, let me know in the comment section below and uh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.